Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, if you're worshiping with us in person, we invite you to please fill out the tear and share on the back of your bulletin and drop it in one of the offering plates on your way out. If you're worshiping with, on with us online, you can drop us a hello in the chat. We'd love to know you're with us. Let us begin worship together. I invite you to stand as you are able for the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall hear me. Sorry, be near me. You and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have, I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. We will read the passage together. Please join me on the bold verses. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your 
way to the Lord, put your trust in the Lord, and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will delight in abundance of peace. rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. 
As we consider today's gospel lesson, I think it's going to be most helpful if we start with what this passage is not. This passage is not an endorsement for abuse, violence, or oppression. Some of the verses here about interacting with those who abuse you, those who strike you, those who take from you, have been used to keep people, especially women, in abusive situations. These verses have been used to enable abusers, to prop up domestic violence, and to silence those who would challenge oppression. It is important that we say up front, this is not godly, and this is not what we believe. If we are living according to what Jesus is telling us here, to love, to show mercy, and to be kind, in the ways that God loves, shows mercy, and is kind, it is simply impossible to enable abuse, allow oppression, or endorse violence. Those two ways of being are incompatible. And since we know that love, mercy, and kindness are where Jesus calls us, we have to assume that there's another, better way to understand these verses and the teaching Jesus offers. Jesus is teaching those who have come to him to be healed and have stayed to listen. This crowd just heard the blessings and woes proclaimed to them, the gospel that we heard last week. They have already heard some challenging truths, and this is no different. But it is gospel, good news, because Jesus is teaching them and us how to be healed in spirit and in life. He is teaching how to live fully, wholly in accordance with God's will. Jesus is inviting his followers to live as changed people, empowered by what God has done in their lives. He's proposing living in extravagant generosity with one another. Now, the society surrounding Jesus was based on reciprocal relationships. When people were generous, they expected generosity in return. Even what might seem like charity was often a trade. Patrons would give to those who could not repay them, but loyalty was expected in return. This continues today. Maybe it's a little less formal, but it continues. This is the basic system of self-preservation. If you give things away with no expectation of return, soon you will have nothing, or so logic says. As Jesus says, this is the way of sinners. Just loving those who love you, just doing good to those who do good to you, just lending to those from whom you expect to receive. It's the way of those who center themselves. But Jesus calls his followers to live beyond a reasonable, logical system of relationship, to live beyond self-interest. He calls us to live larger than reciprocity, to live instead in ways of love, mercy, and kindness, even if that's not what we receive in return. It's a big ask when we think about what love, mercy, and kindness require. Jesus calls us to love, not friendly love, but agape love, the love that reaches beyond logic or reason to lift up the other into their fullest selves. He calls us to be kind, not nice, but kind, which means seeking the best interest of the other person. And he calls us to be merciful as God is merciful, meaning releasing people from the punishment they deserve. Instead of punishment, it's the possibility of repentance, to turn back to God's will. This love, kindness, and mercy are extravagant. They're even more generous than the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you, Jesus says first. But then Jesus reminds us that a like-for-like -like relationship is how sinners live. And really, we often discount the way that God wants us to be treated. We're willing to set the bar low on how we would have others do to us. Jesus calls us to more. Calling us to more generous living, to more loving relationships, and to more kindness in our interactions sounds great. Right until we start thinking about our enemies and the hate we experience and the 
curses we've heard and the abuse we've encountered and the violence we've suffered and the things that have been taken from us. And suddenly, this calling seems outrageous. What Jesus is asking seems entirely unfair. But as Dr. Brian Peterson says, what we need isn't fairness. What we need is mercy. Mercy is what we need. And it's what we receive first. We are all beggars, to quote Martin Luther. We are all sinners. We have all fallen short. We do not love others as we should. We have been someone's enemy. We have hated. We have taken what is not ours. We have caused harm to others. We do not live up to God's plan for us in our relationships with one another. And we have turned our back on God's will for us at some point along the way. But God loves us beyond what is reasonable, beyond what we can give back. God blesses us, prays for us, gives us chance after chance to repent. We see all of this lived out in the life of Jesus. He welcomed sinners to his table, eating alongside people even as they questioned him. He loved those who chased him out of town. He invited God's people to be transformed then and there, to live into the fullness of their salvation. He gave and gave and gave to the point of giving his life, and he did not ask for it back. Instead, he prayed for those who were killing him as he died. And his love, kindness, and mercy find us here and now. In the waters of baptism, we are blessed. Mercy pours down on us as we receive forgiveness, new life, and the Holy Spirit. God's word leads us and calls us in so that we might repent when we lose our way and follow God's will once more. Jesus welcomes us to his table, giving us his own body and blood of salvation. He welcomes us, knowing full well that we are sinners. That's why we need this meal, after all. We are released from the condemnation we deserve, and we are given the compassion that we need. We receive grace upon grace, an overflowing measure of mercy, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This mercy is not scant. It is not a half-hearted scoop. It's a cup full of brown sugar, packed all the way down and rounded at the top, spilling over the edges. This mercy is more than enough. It is outrageously generous, and it is what equips us to answer the invitation Jesus gives us. Because we have received God's mercy, because we are loved, God seeks the best for us, and we can live in this way too. We are empowered to break the cycle of brokenness, responding to enemies, abusers, and those who harm with another option. Just as we are called in when we fall short, we call others back in. As we seek the best for one another, we name the places where harm is happening. We hold one another accountable. We offer one another opportunities to turn back, to repent and seek reconciliation with God and one another. This is not enabling sin. It is refusing to let sin continue. This is what it looks like to love one another. When we love, we do not leave one another in sin. We, like Jesus, offer another way, the way of mercy. We do this loving work as a community. As a church, we pray for one another, and we help each other live as God's people. This means we lift each other up, we care for each other, and we name when we have lost our way. Our community responsibility also means that we do not leave a harmed sibling to do the correcting work. We step forward with them or on their behalf, lifting them back up as we name harm and call our fallen sibling back in. This might seem at odds with what Jesus says about judgment and condemnation, but it's not. When Jesus says, do not judge and do not condemn, he doesn't mean don't name sin. He means, don't assume you know how things will end. 
We are not God. And we don't decide the status of anyone's salvation. We are told to hope. Hope that God can work in even the most unexpected places, and we are to pray that God's grace would change those who have caused harm. Importantly, offering mercy and withholding judgment does not mean there are never consequences. It means we don't get the eternal recompense and punishment we deserve. There are still consequences here on earth for harm that is done. Restitution is part of repentance and reconciliation. And if we have truly repented, we face our consequences as opportunities to grow in our understanding of love and mercy and as chances to seek the best for others. Today, Jesus calls us to live a better way. This way is generous. It is outrageous. It is unfair. It is the way Jesus lived, and it is the way God empowers us to go, the way of love, kindness, and mercy. These things Jesus asks are not easy. They require hard work. They require deep trust in God and in one another. And in fact, we might not be able to do all of these things on this side of the resurrection. And that's okay, because God's mercy for us does not depend on our ability to show mercy to others. God's mercy does change us, though. Mercy transforms us. And God's mercy invites us to join in transforming the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now profess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace. grace. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it's time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace. Look upon our world with mercy, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace. grace. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, especially Mary, John, Bob, Michelle, Austin, Bert, Joyce, Sarah, Nancy, Robin, Jim, Pat, Emily, Sylvia, Bill, Steve, Kay, Yvonne, Eric, Mary, Bill, Earl, Barbara, Kathy, and Ted. God of grace. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of that peace with those around you. If you're worshiping with us from home, we invite you to share that peace with those you are with or to give someone a call and share God's peace with them. You may be seated. At this time, we thank you so much for the ways that you sustain and support the ministry here at Grace through your gifts of time and effort and your financial gifts. We are so glad to have you as partners in this ministry. Our worship continues with the anthem.
Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, O Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Come to God's table. There is a place for you, and there is enough for all. Thanks be to God. You may be seated at this time. 
today for communion. We will be communing around the altar rail. We will invite you to come forward uh, up the center aisle once the choir has communed. That way they can lead us in song. Uh, if you need gluten-free, please indicate that. If you would like us to come to you, please indicate that at the end. We'll be looking to see uh, who would like us to bring communion to them. And uh, of course, when you return, return on the side aisles. If you wish to receive a blessing, please indicate that as well. Let us know what you need for here at God's table. There is enough for all, and we are ready to bless you through this gift God has given us. Let us begin.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So for this week, Pastor Rachel and I are taking part in a synod pilot program for uh, rostered leaders. will be gone the first couple days, but Michelle can be in touch with us if there's anything that you need. Um, so uh, prayers for our safe travel and, and our willing participation as guinea pigs uh, would be appreciated. Uh, this week, Seniors at Grace makes its triumphant return on Thursday. We will have the copycats performing. We are very excited about that. And in just a couple of Tuesdays, we all get to have pancakes here. So you've probably seen that on the Terran Chair. Be sure to plan to join us for that, as well as the burning of the poems as we prepare for Lent together. And now receive God's blessing. Almighty God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen.